Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. For, For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord my, my God. God. O God, you are my God. At dawn I seek you. For you, my soul is thirsting. For you, my flesh is pining, like a dry, weary land without water. For, For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord my God. God. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For, For you, you, my, my soul, soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips, my mouth shall praise you. For, For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord my God. God. For you have been my strength in the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. For, For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, Lord my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know 
what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a person if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what should a person give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every person for what he has done. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the psalm that we recited with King David, we expressed how our souls and our bodies long and thirst for God. We're like a dry, weary land without water. God is our help, and God's kindness is greater than life. God fills us as with a banquet. Our lips will shout for joy and sing God's praises. The psalm tells us a bit about ourselves. We are created for God in the image and likeness of God. When we drift away, there is always this magnetic force, God, attracting us back. A bit like St. Augustine, who was writing from his own experience, we realize that God has made us for God's self and are restless until we rest in God. But our sometimes crude expectations are often not met. For example, Jeremiah feels that he was seduced or duped. He thought that his call to be a prophet might be an easy call. Instead, he is becoming an object of laughter, of scorn, of derision, of mockery, a victim of violence. He contemplates giving up the life of the prophet, but finds that he really can't stop. Something is compelling him to continue speaking in God's name, no matter what the difficulties are. We hope, perhaps, that God will give us an easy life. But in 1973, Lynn Anderson famously sang, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometime. When you take, you've got to give. So live and let live. These words could just as easily be God's to us in our lifetime. There is always a need for compromise, no matter how we choose to live. Any other expectation would be naive and unrealistic. And God is found in reality, in the facts, not in our imagination. Based on his own experience, Paul tells us, that Christian living does involve sacrifice. He urges us to give our bodies as a living sacrifice to allow ourselves to be transformed by our faith. The process of conversion is part of everyday Christian living. It's not just a once-off. It's an ongoing task for the Christians in Rome. So it's also a day-to-day -day part of our Christian journey. Paul is concerned that the Roman Christians should not conform themselves to their, to their age. 
They should be prophetic, to be different to the men and women of their context. On the topic of conversion, Popes John Paul II and Francis urge us to have an ecological conversion. This is the challenge of our times. We have to think not only of what the economy of this age can provide. Francis says that we have to think of the world as though it were another person, like our mother, Mother Earth. We cannot continue to strip it and extract from it whatever we think we need for whatever the business people tell us that we can't do without. In addition to thinking of the needs of the generations that are coming after us, we also need to bear in mind all the other creatures and animals and plants that share our home with us. What is our consumption of the goods of the earth doing to them? Are they being squashed by our ever-increasing ecological footprint? Peter is reluctant to allow Jesus to take the path of suffering that he must. But Jesus is very clear to him. His kind of thinking is diabolical. It's an obstacle to the way God works. It seems that the way of the cross is the way that Jesus has to take to fulfill his mission. And it is the way that we all have to take to a greater or lesser degree. He says, Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. This is the paradox that challenges us to the very core of our being. If we want to save ourselves and save our species and save the world, then we have to be less attached to what we can take from the earth. We have to make sacrifices, as Paul writes. Sacrifices that will be pleasing to God as we try to discern what God's will is. Let's be more willing to recognize our fundamental orientation towards God, created to do what God wills for us, to love our brothers and sisters, to love the coming generations on our Mother Earth. Let's pray together now, as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. May Almighty God Bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.